Imagine, on uh, September 10, 2017, a man by the name of Spencer shot and killed his ex-wife, including seven other people, uh, in Plano, Texas, because she filed for divorce to leave him, according to an article, by people. So why? Simply because of hatred for an ex-partner. And before I, add more, I continue, I want to first introduce myself. My name is Mr. Chibunga Katende, and I want to, I hope to persuade you today to appreciate your ex-partner and not hate them. <laughs> so, why not hate them? Because of what becomes the fallout of having hatred for your ex-partner. The first thing is violence and, and crime. It is very difficult to find statistics on how many people get killed by their ex-partners specifically because they count them together with those who get killed by their current partners. So I picked the couple cases instead. In addition to the one that I mentioned earlier, according to an article by the by New York Post, Justin Williams stabbed his ex-girlfriend nine times before dismembering her body and hiding it. This took place in uh, Chicago this year in August. In addition to that, Senya Khan was shot in the head and killed by her ex-husband because she left him and had filed for divorce. And this also took place in July this year in Chicago. So. The question is, why so much hatred for, for uh, someone you previously called your lover, someone you previously told you loved a lot? So much hatred that you cannot even allow them to leave. Now, somebody's probably thinking, yes, I hate my ex-partner, but not to the point where I want to kill him. <laughs> of course, because sometimes you just have bad wishes for them. You wish no progress for your ex. When you break up or divorce or separate with someone, you don't want to see them with a new partner. You don't want to see them buy a new house or buy a new car. You don't want to see them get a better job. Sometimes you just wish evil should follow your ex at all costs. I recently watched a street interview video on YouTube where people were asked to send a message to their ex-partners. And more than 90% of the messages were negative. There were messages like, I hope your mother dies soon. I hope that coffee will be comfy. Someone said, I know you are pursuing this and that, it's not going to work out, you will never make it, stop trying. <laughs> so the question comes back, why so much hatred for someone simply because they are your ex-partner? So clearly we have a problem. So what's the solution? The solution is simply to stop hating your ex-partner and start appreciating them. Now I know, as crazy and simple as that statement sounds, it is also so true and, so, and it's also important. But the question is, how? The first thing is perception. Unfortunately, we have a very bad perception of failures, and in this case, failures of relationships. So we have to first start by getting a correct perception of failures. So I have an analogy I named between life and fun. Imagine you plan to attend an event with your closest friend or your best friends a month ahead. You plan, and you, your plan is that your friends are going to pick you up on the day and you go together. So as time goes by, the day comes and you, you are relying on them, they promised, and you are waiting for them to pick you up. So as time goes by, you realize your friends are not coming to pick you up. They've refused to pick you up, they've gone and left you. You have no other means of getting to the event, and uh, so you are stranded at home. Now you are angry, you hate them now, you've decided your friendship with them is over. You regret even having been friends with them in the first place. So that day goes by, the next day you get a message that your friends you know, on their way back from the event, died in a car accident. So two questions. Will you appreciate for the fact that they left you behind because in one way or another they saved your life? Or will you regret and still hate them that they left you behind, you missed the event, if you know you know that if you went with them, you also would have died in a car accident? So as you ponder on those two questions, let's ask another important question. What is a failed relationship? We should regard the failed relationship as an end of a journey of two people we are going in one direction, but they have two different destinations. So the earlier you realize that you are, the, the earlier the realization, the earlier the split, the better. We'll go back to the analogy, but let's, ask, let, let's answer another question. Who is your ex-partner? Your ex-partner should be regarded as someone who, whether they left you or they did something that made you leave them, made a statement that they are a wrong person for you, which automatically means you are also a wrong person for them because one-sided compatibility doesn't exist. So, now, to go back to the analogy that I gave you, your ex-partner are like those friends who felt like they cannot go with you because they have a different destination. They're supposed to die that day. You're not supposed to die that day. So you cannot go together with them. Uh, yes, you felt heartbroken and disappointed that they left you behind. They promised, but they disappointed you. But that's not as bad as dying with them in a car accident. So 
I guess what I'm trying to make us understand is that since when you, you face a failure of relationship, it means you were with the wrong person. So when you break up, that's a chance for you to go and start finding the correct person. Now, since that one person was the uh, wrong person, would you rather spend them only with them only two months instead of six months or be between like two years or six years? Which one would you choose? Less time, right? Because the more time we spend, you spend with them, the, the more you invest. And when, it, when the relationship ends, you're going to feel like you've lost big. So with having that as a perception in mind, you, when you have that kind of perception, it allows you to find reasons to not hate your ex-partner. And when you don't hate them, you see the benefits of not hating your ex-partner. So these are the benefits. Quick recovery. When you, you split, you separate, you divorce, and you don't have hatred for them, you find that you, find that you will recover quickly, and you, that allows you to move on quickly. Then, and everyone will be safe. If you don't hate your ex-partner, you will not have harmful thoughts for them, which means no one gets shot, no one gets stabbed, no one get killed, and since those things are not happening, no one is going to prison for it. So we are all safe and we move on with our, with our respective lives and experience for the future. Since you've gone through it, that allows you to choose the correct partner next time because last time you, choose, you made a mistake in choosing, you chose the wrong person. Now you have an experience you can choose correctly and you also have an advice to give maybe your younger siblings, your children, your friend, or anybody else that might have, might need an advice when they go through something like that. So as I come to an end of my uh, speech, I want you to take something home. When your relationship fails, it means your ex-partner has given you reasons why they are not the right person for you, which should automatically translate that you are also not the right person for them. Now, when you understand that, it allows you to, to have reasons to not hate them, and when you don't hate them, you have quick recovery, you have freedom, because then you can move on and experience. Now, whether you like it or not, experience whether you like it or not, your ex-partner has given you a relationship experience. Now, before I rest my case, experience is the most important thing. Whether good or bad, experience is never bad unless you refuse to learn from it. Now, and we all know the saying that goes, experience is the best teacher. I believe you can be the best student. So let's stop hating our ex-partners and start appreciating them. Thank you.